are the emergent abilities of large language models a mirage? DeepMind trains football robots with DeepRL. Mosaic releases a 7 billion parameter open source language model. The Big Code collaboration releases StarCoder. The internal state of a large language model knows when it's lying. AI scribed content farms are on the rise. OpenAI releases Shap E. Researchers have some success decoding thoughts non invasively. Generative AI boosts customer service agent productivity by 14%. Filter announces a fact checking API. Bidjourney releases version 5.1, and AI generated movie trailers continue to improve. Welcome to AI News. Researchers from Stanford ask whether the claimed emergent abilities of large language models are a mirage. Their analysis focuses specifically on sharp and unpredictable changes in model outputs as a function of model scale on specific tasks. Extending observations from the Big Bench paper, they suggest emergent abilities are caused primarily by the researcher choosing a metric that non-linearly or discontinuously deforms per-token error rates. Consequently, emergent abilities may be creations of the researcher's choices, not a fundamental property of the model family on the specific task. Mosaic have released MPT-7B, which they describe as a new standard for open source, commercially usable LLMs. It costs around $200,000 to train on a trillion tokens of text and code in roughly 10 days. The release includes a fine-tuned variant that has a context length of 65,000 tokens. A study in Nature Neuroscience from the University of Texas at Austin introduces a non-invasive decoder that reconstructs continuous language from cortical semantic representations recorded using fMRI. The decoder works by generating candidate word sequences, scoring the likelihood that each candidate evoked the recorded brain responses, and then selecting the best candidate. Given the natural privacy concerns, the authors also conduct a study that suggests that subject cooperation remains necessary for decoder training. Well, that's a relief, I suppose. DeepMind releases work called Learning Agile Soccer Skills for a Bipedal Robot with Deep Reinforcement Learning. Here's what it looks like. The authors used DeepRL to train a humanoid robot with 20 actuated joints to play a simplified one versus one soccer game. The agents were trained in simulation and transferred to real robots zero shot. The Big Code collaboration has released Star Coder, a large language model for code that performs strongly on human eval and multilingual code benchmarks. The model is released under an open rail license agreement. Recent work from Arial and CMU suggests that the internal state of a large language model knows when it's lying. The authors propose Sapplema, a method that leverages the hidden activations of an LLM to predict the truthfulness of generated statements. They find that Sapplema outperforms few shot prompting in detecting whether a statement is true or false achieving accuracy levels between 60% and 80% on specific topics. Next we have distilling step by step, outperforming large language models with less training data and smaller model sizes. The key idea here is to extract LLM rationales obtained through chain of thought reasoning as additional supervision for small models. On one benchmark, the authors find that their 770 million T5 model outperforms the 540 billion Palm model using only 80% of available data. An article in Nature proposes Zebra, or consistent embeddings of high dimensional recordings using auxiliary variables. The method combines ideas from nonlinear ICA with contrastive learning. Code is made available, where the authors summarize Zebra as a self supervised method for nonlinear clustering that allows for label informed time series analysis. Work from OpenAI introduces Shapi, or Shapi, or perhaps just Shape, a conditional generative model for 3D assets. Shapi works by directly generating the parameters of implicit functions that can be rendered as both textured meshes and neural radiance fields. The text conditional model can produce 3D samples of items like an airplane that looks like a banana, 
a paper from Stanford and MIT representing the first study of the impact of generative AI when deployed at scale in the workplace examines the deployment of a chat assistant using data from 5,000 agents working for a Fortune 500 software firm. For context, they note that the majority of agents in the sample work from offices located in the Philippines, with the remainder working in the US and other countries. They find that access to AI assistants increases the productivity of agents by 14%, as measured by the number of customer issues they are able to resolve per hour. Interestingly, they find that these gains accrue disproportionately to less experienced and lower skills workers. One last point about this study, the bulk of the deployment took place between November 2020 and February 2021, so the assistance received by the workers would have relied on tooling that is significantly less powerful than models publicly available today. A quick roundup of other news. OpenAI has raised a further $300 million at a valuation close to $30 billion according to TechCrunch. The article cites a source as claiming that, altogether, outside investors now own more than 30% of OpenAI. Relatedly, the information reported that OpenAI's losses doubled to $540 million last year. In late April, Italy lifted its ban on ChatGPT after privacy improvements, and Mark Zuckerberg described how Meta wants to introduce AI agents to billions of people. Video generator Runway has raised $100 million at a $1.5 billion valuation. LinkedIn uses AI to let users draft messages to hiring managers. Bing AI will see widespread deployment on Samsung Galaxy devices via the built-in SwiftKey keyboard. And Waymo doubles its autonomous ride-hailing area in Phoenix and expands in San Francisco. Modular announced a unified inference engine for AI in their product keynote, together with Mojo, a programming language for all AI developers. It's headed by Chris Latner, so if nothing else, we can expect the engineering to be excellent. Computer vision researcher Andrew Zissman wins the prestigious Royal Society Bakarian Medal for pioneering research contributions. At a national level, the US White House announced new AI-related actions following talks with AI company CEOs. What you're doing has an enormous potential and an enormous danger. <laughs> I know you understand that. The White House reported an independent commitment from leading AI developers including Anthropic, Google, Hugging Face, Microsoft, NVIDIA, OpenAI and Stability AI to participate in a public evaluation of AI systems. In late April, the UK announced £100 million for a task force that will focus on opportunities to establish the UK as a world leader in foundation models and their applications across the economy, and acting as a global standard bearer for AI safety. A study from NewsGuard found that AI-generated content farms are on the rise. They found 49 websites spanning seven languages in the form of what appear to be typical news websites. There were some clues that this content was generated. They found phrases like, I am not capable of producing 1500 words, my cutoff date in September 2021, or in one case the title, Death News. Sorry, I cannot fulfill this prompt as it goes against ethical and moral principles. On to AI risk. AI safety researcher Paul Cristiano gave a two hour long interview on the Bankless podcast. So we're normally not asking like, is, does this thing just solve the problem? We're normally asking like, how long does this thing solve the problem for? This followed up a previous long form interview with Eliza Yudkowsky, who assesses the fate of humanity to be in a particularly dire position, and an alternative perspective for Robin Hansen. The interview with Cristiano covered his perspective on the challenges of the alignment problem, and why his estimate for the probability of AI takeover currently stands between 10 and 20%. He also remarked that moments after seeing an AI system reach human levels, he would estimate a 50-50 chance of doom, a statement that was covered in the mainstream media. It is my understanding that Cristiano has not been working at OpenAI since 2021, so the use of the term ChatGPT creator may be somewhat open to interpretation here. AI pioneer Jeff Hinton spoke with the BBC. It's a reasoning is not as good, but it does already do simple reasoning. And given the rate of progress, we expect things to get better quite fast, so we need to worry about that. And also with CNN. There are very few examples of a more intelligent thing being controlled by a less intelligent thing. Another AI pioneer, Jan Le Kun, 
offered a critique of this latter view on Twitter, saying that good political, business and academic leaders surround themselves with staff whose members are often smarter than themselves. Also discussing risk, Conjecture CEO Connor Leahy spoke with CNN about a lack of regulation for powerful AI systems. There's currently more regulation on selling a sandwich to the public than there is to building potentially godlike intelligence by private companies. Kelsey Piper has written a post about the costs of caution when it comes to slowing down AI. The piece writes in response to a tweet by Josh Carson in conversation with Gary Marcus about the effects of AI on employment that says, Raise your hand if you or someone you love has a terminal illness, believes AI has a chance at accelerating medical work exponentially, and doesn't have till Christmas to wait on your make-believe moratorium. Noting that scientific research is limited by human resources at present, Kelsey says that if we could train AI systems powerful enough to automate everything these scientists and engineers do, they could help. Still, she writes, After considering the benefits, I'm advocating for us to slow down. The risk of a catastrophe there's no recovering from seems too high. Richard No has shared a framework for thinking about AGI called the T-AGI framework, noting that as we get closer to AGI, it becomes less appropriate to treat it as a binary threshold. He defines a system as a T-AGI if, on most cognitive tasks, it beats most human experts who are given time T to perform the task. He suggests existing systems are one second AGIs, are close to one minute AGIs, and are a couple of years off from one year AGI. Now for a quick roundup of tools. Filter announces a fact-checking API specifically for AI-generated text. The service provides evidence for claims that it believes can be supported and highlights claims for which it could not find supporting evidence. I think this service is great, but then I am a member of the Filter team, so my judgment may not be fully impartial. Midjourney announces version 5.1, highlighting that the system is easier to use with short prompts, has higher coherence and fewer unwanted borders or text artifacts. Okay, I'll give it a go with Llama's Land at dusk in the year 2030. Pretty Wild, a collection of models are released under the name La Mini LM, a diverse herd of distilled models from large-scale instructions that use GP3.5 Turbo to generate instruction responses. The models are available for non-commercial research use. Next, Microsoft rolls out a preview version of an updated Microsoft Designer tool. Okay, here we go. I'll prompt with a short animation of Samuel Albany explaining a colourful diagram. Hmm, okay. I suppose everyone likes colouring pencils. Finally, Charles Romano 123 and others have shown how to create movie trailers, in this case for Scarface 2, with Runway. Here's a preview. Mr. Sosa. Yes, speak to me. In the video description, you can find links to the mentioned articles. I hope you have a wonderful day.